Thanks so much for taking the time to chat. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, no, thanks for having me. My name is Nikola Todorovic. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Wonder Dynamics. I've been in the VFX industry well, pretty much since I was 12 years old. I started watching video copilot and learning After Effects and then spent many years in uh, the industry working mostly on indie uh, and commercials and mostly things that needed some kind of um, you know, software or hardware alterations, experimentation, etc. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I, I guess like just to dive right into Wonder Studio and do you want to talk a little bit about what it is and how it works and describe it in general? I think that would lay the foundations for a lot of what we can talk about. Yeah, absolutely. So Wonder Studio is our tool that we made, the platform, AI platform, um, companies called Wonder Dynamics, and we essentially made something that lets you automatically animate, light and compose CG character inside a live action or an animation. We really build the software with the idea to, you know, get rid of all that kind of monotone, laborious work that comes with visual effects. We worked it from a standpoint of, you know, VFX artists and not promising that we're going to achieve final VFX shots because that's not realistic. So we really wanted to build something that can speed up the process and then give you that flexibility, you know, that you usually do in your traditional pipeline. Cool. Uh, I love that because, um, yeah, I mean, on a very crude level, like uh, with me, whenever I've been writing tools or trying to solve solutions, it's never been about replacing the artist, more about um, giving them, you know, more control, but also eliminating a lot of the redundant steps as well. So, right. No, absolutely. We've, we've all been there. I think I've worked in some, you know, studios where you're working the same thing over and over. And it's usually either because of pipeline or the IP or the ownership you can reuse things and then you have to start from the beginning and there's so much of a lot of non-creative stuff uh, with a lot of artists and I think a lot of artists don't like those things they just need to do it um, so but you know for us it came kind of from a personal uh, uh, reason um, Ty was my co-founder we both we met on a film set and then we started writing together and every time we wrote something uh, you know I personally went into visual effects because I wanted to direct I wanted to learn what visual effects is like um you know as a kid i didn't have a you know didn't have much couldn't afford a camera but i had a laptop and internet connection so i started watching tutorials and learning compositing and then you know as we started writing ty and i fast forward obviously to about 2014 i would say when we started writing together and then we realized there's about 10 directors in the world that can get funding for things that we wrote <laughs> so we're like all right there's no way we're gonna get funding for this and then we stumbled upon AI um, about 2018 and then started started building this tool. We've been building it for a long time because we knew it's not something we can build in six months. We really wanted to build that foundational technology. And then we saw it bigger than just two of us and we decided to make a platform and really, you know, give it to the hands of the artist. Yeah, no, that's great. You brought up um, people who potentially aren't a filmmaker or let's say uh, the younger version of yourself who didn't have access to a camera. I'm kind of curious, like, do, who is your target audience? Because I'd, I'd assume it would be a, a AAA studio or something, but uh, it sounds like at the same time you want to serve every kind of filmmaker. Yeah, I think for us, really, like, we are really excited about these indie filmmakers, indie content creators. But that being said, you know, we're going to have, like, a free tier where the product's going to be free, and then enterprise, that's going to be more for studios. That's why we enable these elements where you can download, you know, your FBX animation, you can download clean plate, you can download your passes, uh, or even a Blender file where you can go in and tweak lighting and tweak everything. So, you know, uh, we knew that certain amateur filmmakers will use that final render because to them, certain irregularities are okay if they're putting in social media. But for professionals, as long as you can give them tools to achieve the final VFX, that was really important for us. When we released, we really worked hard for people to understand that we we don't want the AI to take away, uh, uh, you know, from 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 movie magic. It just analyzes the footage. You know, we have over 25 ML models in the background. So, if your shot is beautiful and your cinematographer is amazing, the, it is going to pick up that information and put that in your 3D render, right? If your character is built by an artist that's incredible, that's going to look better, right? So for us, it's like. It's like every VFX, you need to know how to shoot, you need to know how to set it up and then enable those artists to really focus on those that, you know, last 20% because like you can do those 80% quick, but this 20% is the hard one. That's really what separates like brilliant VFX artists. 
Yeah, that, that's always been my philosophy growing up was the 80-20 rule where um, yeah. for VFX, it's like yeah, 80% of the way there very quickly, then the last 20% is the noodling and the uh, why yeah. won't shot get final? <laughs> to eliminate that 80% means that you yeah. can just dive right in and do the part that matters. We didn't want to build a black box. I think the problem that we're seeing right now with a lot of AI tools is that they're black boxes and people don't understand that these productions, they have thousands of artists for a reason that have to collaborate. A shot that has 50 passes, you know, uh, uh, so um, there there is a reason why, you know, these movies are, are so hard to make. So for us, it was, you know, we know that, that these studios cannot just put a black box in their pipeline of thousand artists, a lot of 3D software, a lot of compositing softwares that are internally built, right? So for us, it was really important to build something that even if you don't care about AI, you can pull those elements and just plug it in your traditional uh, process and, and we've done that when we you know we worked the russo brothers on uh, their movie called electric state um and we brought in artists senior artists that worked on you know big marvel films and we literally didn't tell them anything about our tool in a sense of like for them to learn it it was more like here are these passes and obviously we'll learn from them then a lot like we were getting feedback okay this is not fitting in in my pipeline or this is not feeling fitting in my pipeline you've got an amazing advisory board so i'm, I'm curious like in terms of how were you able to sell well first of all um how were you able to gain access to so many phenomenal people but then in addition um being able to communicate your vision in a way that yeah was a lot of the advisory members uh we got was on cold emails um you know um i think a lot of times if you like if you can if you can be very open when you're communicating with people you realize that they really do want to help yeah, young people. I, I think a lot of people that reach certain success um, are there for a reason. And then they look back, they're like, you know, for us, it was the mission, I think. Uh, a lot of the filmmakers we have on the board really believe in that mission. And they've been, you know, people like Spielberg have been, you know, working on democratization of content. They're innovate, you know, the guy in invented CG. So, you know, for him, he gets, he gets that more, better than anyone, I think. So I think for us, it was just people kind of, believing our mission and thinking, you know, that we could do it. And, and, and obviously some of the members like Greg Tratner, Bob Schwab, my personal members, uh, my personal mentors that I've known for a long, long time. Joe Russo has been absolutely incredible. He, uh, I think Russo brothers really do understand, you know, kids trying to make content and storytellers that are not, you know, they do these film festivals, they do a lot of, so, you know, we've been following Agbo and them for a while. And that was another one that was just kind of, an intro of a of a person I knew, and then we showed him what we're thinking, and, and Joe got it immediately. He was like, "Oh, this shit's gonna change everything." So he uh, uh, he was really really uh, uh, supportive, and and uh, I mean everybody really from advisory board. So for us, it, we've been we've been really humbled by it. But my advice, I meet a lot of uh, startup founders, first time startup founder, which is myself as well. I think, and they you know. They have this perception oh you really need to know a lot of people to get to this and we tell them no actually you need to send a lot of emails and be very stubborn one of my mentors i mentioned earlier bob schwab he had a story uh, he's in a different industry he's in real estate but he tells me this story which was really brilliant there's this guy in la that was like top of the line real estate and bob starting his career didn't do anything and he really tried to get a meeting and someone told me told him like you know if you want to be successful if you get to work with this guy you know, even if he's bringing his mail, like that's what you want to learn from. So he, he, he said, he said he had like $3,000 in his bank account and he rented this billboard across from the guy's office, spent all his money, put a billboard. He's like, dear mister, my name is Bob Schwab. Please call me on this number. I think he was like 21 years old. And the guy, you know, saw that and he called him. He's like, he's like, I just want to see who's this crazy person did this. <laughs> he ended up working for him and that ended up changing his career completely. So. We think of our field as creative field and I need to be only creative on my work, but you really need to be creative on things that get you that work or how do you distribute that work? How do you market it? Uh, that's equally important. You know, there's a lot of creativity in business. There's a lot of creativity in, in coding. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I learned is like, is the engineers are creative, so creative. And like, you don't, you know, sometimes you don't give them as much credit on that. Yeah, uh, I, I love that because I mean, you were talking earlier about writing and yeah, I, I think it's something that's so applicable to everything and it's not, you know, I'm I'm an artist in this small slither of the yeah. vertical, um, so it's important to exercise that as much as you can and I, I love that, yeah. I love um, 
the really ballsy, innovative ideas that people put out there to see how they can do something different. Because you're right, when you're just doing cold calling, um, you got the gatekeepers you got to navigate around, and on top of that, yeah. you really yeah. got to try and get people to buy in on you, which can be pretty hard.